Welcome back to the podcast. It is episode three, and I know what some of you are thinking. Are you guys okay? What happened? Did the roof really collapse? Yes, the roof really did collapse right at the end of the last episode. Yeah, we almost died. uh, Yeah, honestly, what horrible timing that was. Truly. You make jokes about a natural disaster, and next thing you know, it, (laughs) it, it happens. But thankfully, we were able to just quickly get under the desk before anything happened. So Yeah. So we're here. We're alive. We're thriving. Yep. We got the roof fixed. It was kind of pricey, but yeah, you know what? a little bit. That's what that's uh, that's what you pay for when you're successful podcasters like us. Yes. And it is also the day after Thanksgiving. It is. It is. So if it's. If... <laughs> 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 it is Black Friday. So if you guys have gone out shopping let us know how it went. I, I can't. Did you die? Did you die? If if you died, <laughs> call call us personally and tell Just us. Just let us know. <laughs> tell us what happened. Email us, DM us on Twitter, whatever you need to do. If you died on this day, please, we want to hear from you. We need the tea. You know what? I can't. I can't really believe. Hmm. I wonder how. So we're not actually recording this on a Friday, as a lot of you guys probably know. We record this no. ahead of time so that it can be edited for Friday. I I don't I don't know what Black Friday is going to be like this year. No. I don't know it's if it's a little scary. Yeah. Like I mean like Black Friday is always kind of scary. I've never yeah. personally gone not, nobody in my family has ever really gone to the you know the midnight when does when does it start? It starts on it at starts midnight. at midnight. Yeah. Okay. I've only been once at midnight. What was that like? It wasn't that horrible i went with my ex and her aunt okay and so you had protection yeah and it was (laughs) it was such a shitty night too because like i was having an allergic reaction to something oh no so i took yeah i took benadryl and so it was midnight and my ass was half asleep on benadryl walking through the mall and i was like oh i'm gonna die today like, I'm just going to pass out right here on this if mall there floor. there was a day that death <laughs> would come upon me. It was that day. Black Friday just sounds like one of those days where it just seems really grim. Black Friday. Yeah. This yeah. death day. And I think it was, like, raining that day, too. So it was just, like, a gloomy night. Ugh. Friends yeah. have been sending me Snapchats of the mall sometimes when oh, they go, shit. and it's just dead. Dude, fucking knowing our dumbass American asses, like, I feel like Black Friday is going to be packed. Black Friday will be packed. And imagine, you know, imagine you've probably seen people go into the store without a mask and an employee says, hey, put a mask on and whatnot. Like throw a fucking fit. How are you going to stop a barrage of people not wearing masks? Because I feel so bad for retail workers, like especially now. Right. It <sighs> it was never. Have you ever worked a retail job? I have. If you've never worked in retail or food industry, God. fuck off. You have no yeah. right to complain about Dead anything. Ass. Literally, Nothing. I've worked more in the food industry than I have retail. Mm-hmm. I worked retail for two hours, <laughs> 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 and I worked uh, food industry since I was like sixteen. Same. Up until I was about 22, I worked yeah. in the food industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and um, just like you, I worked a retail job for like a, a day. And that was yeah, it. Yeah, dude, it was a hot topic. <laughs> was... And I was like, nope. <laughs> what was it about hot topic that just was just like, nope? You said you were only there for two hours? Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't think... In, I don't think the store in general was bad. Like, the people were pretty cool, except, like, one manager who was just a dick. Right. So, I really only learned, like, how to fold clothes <laughs> that day. <laughs> the perfect so like, square okay. fold? Yeah. And, bro, I'm I'm so bad at folding clothes, honestly. Like, I, mean, I still can't do it. I kind of just... I just kind of hope for the best. I kind of fold them... In a way that it'll still kind of be wrinkle free, but it's kind of just thrown yeah. in my dresser. Yeah, same. I just kind of like just stuff it. I'm like, all right, you just go in there. 
How do you guys fold your clothes at home? Send us an email at thedaydreamarcade at gmail.com. <laughs> Give us full detail instructions on how you fold your clothes. Do you iron your clothes? Do you have an ironing board? Do you... Fuck, I, I can't do that bit. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck there was. I don't know where that was going. So yeah, uh, I just learned how to fold clothes that day. And so when I left, they were like, okay, we'll give you a call on when you're supposed to come back. And like when your shift starts and shit. I was like, okay, cool. Like, just let me know. So I leave. Everything's all Gucci. I think it's like two days after that i'm at a park near my house and i'm with like a group of friends like we're very high because <laughs> <laughs> we smoked in said park it, can, honestly that park is beautiful there's like a nature walk that you can go on to that's and it's awesome just, yeah and it goes like to the everglades so you're not like in like the dangerous part of the everglades you're just kind of like on a trail nearby it and you can like see it mm -hmm. so it's pretty nice I used to take like pictures and shit over there when I had like a really nice camera. Nice. I, I forgot what it was. I think it was a Nikon. Ooh. Yeah. But yeah, so we're all there at the park. I get a call from the store and they're like, hey, where are you? You're supposed to be here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody called me. Oh, I had no. no idea when I was supposed to come back. Like, what do you mean? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, like you're on the schedule. And I was like, huh? Nobody like, told nobody told you. Yeah, nobody showed nobody. you a copy of the schedule. No, they were just like, we'll give you a call on when you're supposed to come back. And I was like, OK, that's fine. Well, this is your call. Literally. And then they're like, yeah, you were supposed to be here like an hour ago. And I was like, Jesus. what? <laughs> like, are you stupid? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you mean? So they're like, yeah, can you come in now? And I'm like, I don't have my car. I'm not nearby. Like, I, I can't come in and they were like oh okay then we'll just give you a call when you're supposed to come back i was like okay bye <laughs> so then the next time i was supposed to work it was actually black friday and so that actually like correlates well to the story that's funny nice um, so i had gotten into a car accident that day oh no <laughs> yeah and so I like was dealing with that. So I never called Hot Topic and like told them, which was my bad because I never called them. Right. So they call me and they're like, hey, why aren't you here? <laughs> and I'm like, listen, I got into an accident. I never called and I'm sorry about that. Like, um, I don't know what you want to do with that. And they're like, OK, yeah, we'll just cover the rest of your shifts. I was like, OK, goodbye. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's fine. Hot topic. I I haven't gotten fired from a job. But that is the only time I've gotten fired. I've definitely fucked over an employer or a possible employer <laughs> in this situation. When I was about 18 or so, I got a job offer at another place that was similar to the place that I worked. And they were offering probably three more dollars an hour which to me at that point i'm about I'm, I'm in college i need to i need to help pay for it so mm -hmm. literally that was my only reason for wanting this other job and also the hours were a bit better yeah so i went for an interview went through the process got my drug test got my fingerprints they had to do a background check on me and they were aware of my situation at the time with college and everything. So yeah. the interview, the guy doing it was, was just like, are you 100% committed to this decision to move to us? And I told them yes. And then when I told my boss, I should have told him that I was going for an interview before, but I didn't. Uh -oh. So I went back to work that day and I told my manager, I was like, hey, can I talk to you? And she pulls me aside. I tell her about the whole entire thing. She was pissed. She was super <laughs> pissed off at me because she, the, the way that she proposed it was that I was giving her an ultimatum and she was not happy, <gasps> which I can understand. But that then preceded her to try and convince me to stay. She showed me all of these programs and whatnot that the company that was working, like we were like a part of like this big corporation. 
right? Very, okay. very corporate bullshit stuff, Oof. which I was too young to really understand at the time. Yeah. So she shows me all these things saying, oh, th- like they can pay for your college. They can, you can move up. You can become a manager and whatnot. So she convinced me, or in other words, manipulated me to stay. Huh. And I ended up <clears throat> turning down that other job. And the part that made me feel so scummy about it was when the guy at this other place asked me if I'm 100% committed to to working for them. It's because they had to do a background check on me that cost several hundred dollars. <gasps> they went ahead and did the background check. And then they emailed me and asked me if I can come in and start training. I sent them an email saying that I took another position at my (sighs) current job and that I will not be going there. And they had already done the background check on me and everything. I was all (laughs) set to go. And then they emailed me back almost immediately. And I still haven't opened that email. It's still sitting somewhere in my inbox, in my email. (laughs) I never emailed them back. I got, like, throughout that week, I got, like, five calls from this establishment. And I never answered. They left voicemails on my phone. They have been, those have been deleted, but... As soon as they would come in, I wouldn't answer. I would send them straight to voicemail, and then I would delete the voicemails. I'm like, I... Dude. That's fucking awesome. That is, like, the worst thing I've ever done to an employer. (laughs) Isn't that fucked Uh, up? (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, but then that proceeded to be three more years of working there where my mental health gradually declined to the point where I was just I hated my life so yeah. and that's a story for another day yeah I no, I totally feel that I have also stories of just like not enjoying where I'm working alright so trailing back to Black Friday I have pulled up some stories on Reddit of some Black Friday horror stories and if you guys will indulge us, I would like to read a couple and we could talk about them. Um, True. So this one is from Wildcard084. Walmart story time. A couple of years ago when the sale started, there was a surge of people trying to get their stuff. One lady got knocked down and her pen went straight into her neck, thankfully missing the jugular. The fucked up part is no one tried to help. They just walked over her to get their shitty deal items. An associate Dude. saw it happen. That's fucking horrible. An associate that saw it happen had to stand over top of her to protect her from getting trampled. When the ambulance crew arrived, they had to literally shove people out of the way because no one would move. People suck. Oh, God. People are trash, dude. That poor woman. People have always been awful, but if I can just go off on a really quick tangent, I go feel for it. this year we've said so many times has just collectively sucked. Yes. Uh, out of every year in my lifetime, this one feel this one year feels like ten. This story just kind of brought up my feeling about how out of all the times where people should collectively come together and be there for one yeah. another and support one another, it should be now. But dude, this is like the year for people to like get their shit together and just be friendly to one another. Yes. Like, we're all going through some shit right now. But the lack of empathy that Dude. people have for one another is just, its, it's where is it? I've never seen such a mentality like, if it doesn't affect me, I don't give a shit about it. Then this year, like it's been crazy. Like from the people hogging toilet paper to people just buying out all of the meat, buying out all of the shit. You know what's so weird? People were, or at least at my grocery stores, people were getting all the toilet paper, paper towels, and meat. Nobody was really getting... Oh my god. Nobody was really getting fresh produce or stocking up on like the microwavable meals like Dintymore. And like Hormel, Hormel, like mac and cheese and stuff, 
yeah. or people were just getting a bunch of shit that they don't really necessarily Dude, need. It makes no sense why there was a shortage for toilet paper. Like, COVID shouldn't you get water? Affects your ass. I, what was happening? If you have like, if you have a rag or something and soap, you can wipe Dude, your ass for oh my days. God. Like they sell bidets that you can get. That they, for pretty cheap. They do like, sell the days. That. You can get one on Amazon right now for like $30. I'm going to Amazon right now and I'm going to type in bidet. Dude, it's just... Bidet, $34.99. Bidet, $39.95. <laughs> you, literally, you can get a bidet and a towel and you're set. Exactly. And, you know, if, if worse comes to worse, you probably have a shower. Spread those butt yes, cheeks and stick your ass exactly. up in the air. Exactly. Come on. Literally. And if you have like one of those like handheld shower heads that you can just like grab them like that, you're in. Right. God, I hate people. I fucking hate people. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Daydream Arcade. This is the podcast for those people who hate people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm like tempted well, yeah. to buy a bidet. Honestly, yeah, they're pretty good. Like, do you have one? 10 out of 10. Um, I used to. Oh. Uh, since I moved, I don't have one. Ah. Yeah. I've never used one. one. They're pretty. They're pretty good. I think I've only used it once. Does it feel weird? I mean, it is water just shooting at you in your sensitive areas. Is it cold? So, yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know how I feel about I cold feel like water it's like spraying on my warm. asshole. Okay. I feel like it's just like room temperature water. Okay. But anyway, enough about cleaning our assholes. Back to Black Friday. <laughs> I have a story um, that I could read. Yes, it's not go that for long. It. So this is by Ruckus55 on Reddit. I've thrown one punch in my life. It was on Black Friday. So it was the year the 360 came out. I was standing in line to get some external hard drive next to the video games. Uh, and there was this 11 ish year old kid with a woman in her 60s. He was waiting for his 360 bundle woman before him had gotten the last one, sighs all around, then he says, nope, one more, and begins the motion of handing it to the kid, and this guy comes out of nowhere and pushed the older woman and the kid. <gasps> the kid hid his face on the edge of the video game rack, you know, the one with the metal and plastic dividers. Mm -hmm. At 19 years old, I don't know what came over me, but I instantly swung for the dude's head and caught him right in the temple, sending him into a Keurig tower <laughs> at the middle of the aisle. Ooh. Everyone froze, including me. Guy had dropped the 360, got up, and walked away. I slid it with my foot to the kid, and he didn't say anything either. Best part was, as I still wanted the hard drive, I turned to get in the back into the end of the line. Um, at the same time, the rep I'm what? So the rep I'm in charge of handing out. Oh, okay. The rep in charge of handing out the other items, such as the hard drive, asked who was next. First two people in line just pointed at me, causing me to skip about five spots in line. What a fucking hero! Yeah, that that. Good for him. I fucking should an asshole. Yeah, the back again to we. F I fucking hate people. Imagine like pushing an eleven-year-old and an and a woman in an her elderly 60s? woman. Dude, like how evil do you have to be? The Xbox 360s aren't going anywhere. Like, ugh. I mean, I wonder. I mean, PS4s are sold out right now, right? PS5s, I <laughs> PS4s. <laughs> What year are we in? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can we go back to 2014, please? But, you yeah, know, fuck, fuck that guy. You know what I should do over the next four years? Just get really buff, just w lift a lot of weights, and then put on a superhero outfit, and every Black Friday, just go to as many stores as I can at midnight, and anybody that's giving an old lady a hard time or pushing a kid just around, kill them. just kill them. <laughs> Just straight up murder like them. The, like Homelander from the boys style. Just fucking <laughs> kill everybody that's that's doing wrong. Alright, I got another story off of Reddit. Uh, this is from uh, Kido? Kido? I worked for six years at a Johnny Rockets in a mall as a server and management. We didn't open early like the rest of the stores because we are a restaurant. Well, we don't serve breakfast. Had people True. shake our gates screaming that they wanted food. OT would just be me and an opener getting the chairs set out. 
I pointed them towards the food court and told them we didn't serve breakfast. A lady spit at me and told me, I know you have bacon. We do. <clears throat> in a fridge waiting to be cooked and put on a burger. Edit. Not all Johnny Rockets serve breakfast. Some do. Even some serve beer. But my location has never been one of them. Jesus. I figured that I could that I would read that one out just with like the food service yeah. stuff. People are so rude. I don't... Like, I, well, people are rude in general with like just customer service people i feel go go ahead um i feel like food industry is like a different breed Mm -hmm. absolutely just assholes dude like i the amount of times i've gotten yelled at when working at mcdonald's oh dude it's disgusting do you have any stories from mcdonald's i've never worked at a fast food place i've always wondered um so I've worked at McDonald's and I've worked at a sub shop and it wasn't as fast food, but it's like it kind of fast. Like if you get behind, you're going to get behind because of the amount of tickets. Mm -hmm. So what's it called? So McDonald's, like I think there was this one time where this woman, I think the cook forgot something on her food. Or whatever and i was just i was just a little a bitch just working the front counter and like the drive through window mm-hmm. like that's that's all i was doing like i have no fucking responsibility <laughs> like just to give people their food like it's the runner's job to put everything in the bag and make sure everything's there and the cook's job to make everything correct right so i just give people the food but this woman was so angry because someone like uh forgot something i don't remember what it was exactly but she she was just yelling and she called me stupid like it was jesus i don't i don't understand like people really think so little of people that work at fast food restaurants when like it, it it doesn't define who you are where you work you're doing it to make a living right you're doing it to make money like yeah Like, I don't know where that disconnect is, where people feel like just because you have a certain job brings you lower on the social totem pole. Yeah, dude. Like, everybody's working. Everyone's doing the same thing. It it doesn't matter what you do to earn money, unless you're, like, doing something illegal. But, like... (laughs) That's true. But also, it's like, you don't know what... Even with people that do, you know where they make their money illegally or whatever Mm -hmm. you know as long as you're not hurting somebody yes that and also you don't know why they're doing that you don't know why that person has been in that job so exactly just be decent you don't have to fucking smile just be polite just be just act like a fucking human right with like empathy or like class yeah you know you don't have to be a dick just because, like, okay, someone fucked up. Just calmly go up to them and be like, hey, I'm missing this. Like, and because I paid for it. Like, whatever. Like, I get it. You can be upset if you paid for something and it's wrong and you're like, okay, that's kind of annoying. But don't just, like, insult the person. Yeah, no. just Or just, like, make them feel like such a piece of shit. Like, just you know? say, hey, this is, this is wrong. You know, it's okay, but can you redo this? Yeah. You don't... And it, Literally, like, 99% of the time, if you tell someone politely, like, hey, can you redo this? They will more than gladly, like, do it for you. Yeah, exactly. I can't tell you how many times, as a waiter, I've been blamed for food not being right. Bro, and you literally have nothing to do with the food. All you do is bring it out. Right. You know, sometimes as a waiter, it's your responsibility to do other things. And sometimes, yes, that will fall on you. But most of the time, it's the kitchen's fault. Yes. So I don't understand why some people assume that just because something's wrong means that the waiter fucked up. It sucks for them because they have to go out and actually talk to the customer. Yeah. The people in the kitchen most of the time don't have to. They're lucky, bro. They don't have to deal with that shit. Unless, like, someone, like, specifically asks for the chef. Right. Or, like, the people in charge of the food. Like, they don't have to deal with shit. Oh, I actually, I remember something from McDonald's. When I was a kid, uh, my mom and I went into a McDonald's and just to get 
me something quick to eat and we went up to the counter and the manager there was basically berating her employees raising her voice and jesus she was basically like moving people over like shoving them trying to like do things herself and i remember one i don't remember exactly why she was upset but i remember one thing that she said she was like welcome to mcdonald's land of the slow Oh, God. And a lot of us up there were just all kind of like looking at each other. Just like, do we what do we do? Do we say anything? Like, she's the she's the man. Do we call the fucking cops? Like, what what do we do here? God, some people should not have any position of power. They just abuse it. Mm hmm. I, I know that my mom called or filed a complaint and then that manager got fired. And then we got 20, <sighs> we got two twenty dollar gift cards to McDonald's. Hey, that's amazing. Yeah. Good shit. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is by Akari. Akare? Very bad at pronouncing. Um <laughs> I work back of house at a Toys R Us. I spent Black Friday taking big ticket items to the back where we just loaded them into the customer's car instead of trying to make our way to the front of the store. Apparently someone decided it was fine to wander into the back storage room and start opening boxes to find what they wanted. Other customers saw this one jackass do it and then decided it was okay if they did it too. What? My, yeah. Myself and the other back of house guys were busy wrestling with a really obnoxious bed set. So when I made it to the other side of our back storage, I found like eight to ten people just taking cases off our bays and opening them then tossing them aside as if they didn't want it. They claimed there was nothing indicating they couldn't come back there. And we have two signs on the swinging door saying employees only and warning only authorized personnel beyond this point. Oh, my God, dude. People are so fucking stupid. People are really fucking <laughs> stupid. Oh, my God. Um, this is by Oladida. <laughs> Ugh, this is one story that makes me the most mad. Mostly because at my work, my customers do the same thing on a regular basis. I work at a grocery store and we offer free coffee to the customers. We have this one customer that when the pot is empty, he just goes upstairs to our break room and helps himself to the coffee up there. What? He also likes to hang out in the warehouse and drink his coffee and just stand there. I'm pretty sure I'm the only employee that freaks out at him too. I don't want to have to deal or even see customers when I'm on, when I'm on my break. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> I feel that. First off, this sounds like something straight out of Superstore. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yes. Oh, my God. If you guys don't know what Superstore is, it's a show on Hulu. I think it's on NBC. Yes. Uh, basically, a sitcom... And it takes place in a makeshift Walmart. That's the best way that I can describe yes. it without really That's going into detail. Yeah, it's awesome. So think of like The Office, but less documentary, but same humor. <laughs> I'm actually, I just got on to season five of that. Oh, nice. Yeah, we should watch more of that. Dude, when I saw the fucking actress from Myrtle passed away, I was so sad. Yeah, was like, it was what? so sudden too. They it, didn't it, even address it. Was it. Just and then like, at the... in memory of, I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean Myrtle's dead? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It made me so sad. It said she was uh, fighting cancer Aww. for a while. And um, she just passed. She was like 86, though. Like, that's a good that's a good life. She she lived and she was fucking hilarious. Oh, yeah. She did amazing on Superstore. A lot of her one liners were really good. <laughs> so good. Hey, everyone. Daryl here. Sorry for the quick interruption, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that Brianna and I are about to spoil something from Superstore that happens somewhere down the line in the series. So just skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it and you should be fine. Thank you. Now, I remember when they brought in when they fired her in the show, they oh ended God. up having their everyone was just like, bring back Myrtle. And they brought back a hologram of her. <laughs> They're like, I got you Myrtle. It's like, that's not Myrtle. <laughs> it's not Myrtle. <laughs> I really want to know how they did that, though. <laughs> like, I don't know. How do you, because if she wasn't working there, how did they get her saying that? <laughs> I don't know. But things I mean, in things in sitcoms don't have to make sense. Yeah, but also it makes me think of like, did, did you hear when what Kanye West gave Kim, I, I think for her birthday? 
it was like a hologram of her father and he died like years ago that's weird yeah he got her a whole ass hologram of like him just saying shit and apparently it sounded just like him that's and like and it looked just like he would look like if he was like still alive that's weird it's so weird and the dude he made him say you married the like the smartest man <laughs> i was like bro you married Kanye. a god <laughs> like why <laughs> When my parents die, if somebody bought me a hologram of one of them... I don't know how I would feel about that. I, I would, would feel very uncomfortable. I would probably kick them in the throat. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of disrespectful in a way. Let them you know? rest. Yeah. You know, I don't need to walk into my house every day and just get greeted by, like, hi, by Daryl. dead father. Like, dad? I'm like, what? <laughs> Jesus. Like, cause it, like, I get the sentiment, like, you you miss them, like, you, you want to hear their voice, like, you just, you miss them being around, but it's not the same whatsoever. I don't want that. No, it's weird. Like, you can't hug them, you can't have an actual conversation with them, like, right. it's just repeating whatever you wrote in the script, like, what? Exactly. I mean, one of the reasons why I also wanted to do this show was we both had that idea on like Mother's Day and Father's Day coming up to do separate podcasts with our parents. Yeah. So, you know, eventually when they do go, we have we have whatever we record with them. Dude, yeah. You know, forever. So Yeah. Be able to cherish that, like Yeah. And also cherish this friendship as yes. well. Yes. Dude dude, remember when I don't know why I thought of this. Um, it was a while ago. I think we were both like going through it or some shit. And you were like, oh, like, what are we going to do in a few years? Or, like, are we even going to be friends anymore? Or some shit. And this was like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And like now we have a whole last project together. Yeah. We're literally getting closer every day. Like, it's this fucking is, awesome. This is why I grabbed you and made you my podcast partner because I can't bear to live without you as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think it's good that we started this project because mm -hmm. no matter how long that we go with it, we have we have this on record and it's going to yeah. be around on the internet forever. And we get to like learn more about each other. Exactly. Each episode. Mhm. Mm and it's fucking awesome. And also learn how bad we are at uh <laughs> speaking? <laughs> at speaking? <laughs> <laughs> Because I think we've been recording for 46 minutes, it says, but I think we yeah. only have about 20 solid minutes of content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we uh, do want to get guests on here at some point, guys. But yes. me personally, I kind of just want to get the feel of making a very flowable conversation before we start having guests on. Because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that you don't hear that gets cut out. It's just us being like, uh. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure other podcasts are like that oh, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you can't always be 100% on every single week. But, and those of you that have been complimenting us, saying that we have really good chemistry, we flow really well, thank you. Yeah, that means a lot. You know, I found something Did on my computer the other day. It was mm -hmm. a couple clips of the one time. Because I know that I said before, one of the reasons why I wanted... Ugh, one of the reasons... <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. He sounded like Spongebob when he like had a taste of the snail food. <laughs> 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 One, uh, I found a couple clips of the time when you and I streamed over on Mixer, the couple streams that we did together of Journey to the Savage Planet. <gasps> oh my god, that was so much fun. I That's, loved that so much. <laughs> that was so much fun. That's actually when I remember that was really the first time you and I really clicked. Yeah, that was honestly so much fun. Like, even the people watching were having so much fun. Mm hmm And I... I just wanted to just do more shit with you, but I never... The one reason... I've kind of talked about this before, too, 
about how hard it is to get other people to commit and to be on yeah. the same wavelength as you. Yeah, it's hard to find people that you like genuinely click with. And, yeah. Like, have like I guess the same kind of work ethic and like the same vision on what you want to do. Mm hmm. But so far, literally, you and I have had zero problems. All right. So I think we should move into some Twitter questions. You're. I put out on my Twitter and also on the Daydream Arcade Twitter. Uh, uh, Hell yeah. Asked, uh, we'd like to hear from you guys. If you'd like to be a part of the discussion in episode three of the Daydream Arcade podcast, send us a, send us a story of a crazy dream you had at any point in your life, whether it was when you were younger, recently, etc. At the time of this recording, a couple people still haven't sent me their responses. So sorry, you guys aren't in this one. You got... <laughs> <laughs> So a couple people still haven't sent in their answers, so I'm sorry we're not going to be able to get to your guys' responses because you didn't act on time. <laughs> uh, but I have I have this one right here. This is from Rochelle. This is her response. It's kind of long, but I will feel free to pause it in spots and go back. Okay, so I think everyone is familiar with the movie Inception, yeah? So this story is about a dream I had, or multiple dreams I had, that was kind of Inception in real life. I'm one of those people who I wouldn't say suffers from, but I experience sleep paralysis often. It is not the typical sleep paralysis you hear about or the other people experience. No scary shadows or feeling like there's something sitting on my chest trying to kill me, etc. I straight up just wake up sometimes and can't move. I'm not scared or feel threatened in any way. I constantly fade in and out of sleep, hoping to just wake up, but I normally end up getting frustrated because once I finally wake up from the sleep paralysis, I feel exhausted because I've been fighting my own brain to wake up my body. My dreams during the time I'm in and out of sleep are quite graphic, and I remember them easily. A lot of the time, they feel real. There's a trick I learned from a movie, I think, where wiggling your fingers and toes will help pull you out of sleep paralysis, and it tends to work most times. So overall, mm. the experience isn't frightening to me. It's just more annoying than anything else. So one time, I was waking up in the morning. I had sleep paralysis and did the usual fading in and out of sleep for a while. Like I said... My dreams feel so real during this time. In my dream, I quote unquote woke up, got out of bed, and went to get ready for the day as the smoke alarm. Wait, um, oh wait, shit. Uh, I skipped one whole line. In my dream, I quote unquote woke up, got out of bed, went to get ready for the day as normal. However, something was off. The smoke alarm was going off, but there was no sign of fire or smoke. I went to the smoke alarm and I woke up again. In another dream, same deal. I wake up, go to, uh, go to get ready for the day, but something is off. This time my dog is duplicated and running around the house. At this point, I'm freaked out. I felt like I was stuck in a continuous loop of dreams, and I was unaware of what was actually real. So I'm getting scared, and there I go again, waking up inside another dream. Literally three dreams deep at this point. What? I was this is crazy. I was convinced I was stuck in this dream loop forever. It felt like it lasted so long, although the dreams were only like a few seconds. When I woke up normally, I was so confused and felt completely disconnected from reality. Like I was just in another dream and something weird was going to happen. It threw my whole day off and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I ended up Googling it and discovered it's called a false awakening loop. And all I can use to describe the experience, it was like Inception. Just layers of dreams. Thankfully, I've not experienced it since. That's terrifying. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Rochelle. Hell um, yeah. Th I, I've had dreams that are really vivid and just oh, me too. feel like I'm there. But never to the point of I can consciously really make things happen. I remember there was a span of years where I just had a lot of crazy dreams. And then there was a time in my life probably around the time I started smoking weed mm. pretty heavily that I just didn't dream at all. Me too. Me too. I rarely dream, to be honest. But when I do, <laughs> they are intense. Is it when you kind of stop smoking? I think so, yeah. That's typically... I I think a lot of people experience that <laughs> when you kind yeah. of take that tea break. Yeah. A lot of people get crazy dreams that gradually become more and more uh vivid and stuff yeah 
I remember I was with a group of friends in this one dream and we had to go look for something. I don't know what it was, but all I knew was we had to go find something. And I remember every single time there was this pyramid and at the top of it was just this glowing orb. And we had to keep climbing up it to get it. But every single time that we were going up, the stairs just kept going further and further and further and further. And by the time we get to the top, I wake up and I'm just like, I don't know what happens from that point. Um, I also remember this one recurring dream that I used to have when I was younger. It was kind of, it was kind of like I was, I was awake staring at my wall. Maybe I ha- maybe this is sleep paralysis. I'm not sure, but I used to have, do you ever watch the Teletubbies? Yes. I used to be scared of that vacuum. <laughs> oh no. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I think it was maybe the... Uh, what was the vacuum's name, dude? Hold on. I, I don't know. Hang on. Uh, look up a picture of it. I'm going to look up a picture of it right now. I got you. The new new. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that kind of... Can you imagine like people telling like scary <laughs> stories? Like you have, you have the rake. <laughs> you have Slender Man. <laughs> and you have the new new. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it fit? <laughs> it fits. Don't you dare tell me that it doesn't fit. If you were to line those up, if you were to have absolutely no knowledge of if uh, you were to have no new new knowledge. No new new knowledge. And you were to put, rack that into creepy pasta legends. That would be a thing. <laughs> I sent you the new new. Oh my god. I mean, to be honest, his eyes do be looking kind of creepy. Oh, yeah. So that's like a brush for his eyebrows. I thought he actually had eyebrows over him. (laughs) That's a whole brush. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, you know that sound that he makes, that slurping sound? Yeah. (laughs) I used to get triggered by that sound. I wonder if I still play it. Hang on. let Let me go look up a YouTube video and let's see. Let's see if the sound still triggers me. If I go dead silent in a second, it's because I'm having a <laughs> seizure having on the floor. Yeah, I'm having a panic attack on the floor. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. It is like the the clip I'm watching is like the new new is like slurping up a bunch of Teletubby custard really f- and but like they put it together so he's doing it really fast in like a montage yeah. and he's moving so fast and then it's just like <laughs> And I'm just like, stop! Oh my god, I need to send you a picture. Oh god, is oh it like a creepy pasta edit? Oh. No. What is it? Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck, bro? No. Leave no. Tinky Winky alone. No. Oh my god. <laughs> This is a cursed image. This is a fucking cursed image. <laughs> if I put if I put a filter on the hang on, I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna save this. By the way, guys, this is gonna be a longer episode. I should have said at the beginning, um, I apologize for episode two being so short, but we didn't have a lot of time to record. Oh my god. But in case in case you guys I don't know where I'm gonna put this. Can you imagine if this is, like, you know how we post pictures of references that we make on social media? What if we just post this on Twitter with no context whatsoever? People are going to be like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. So, oh, my, that was creepy. Your voice just did this weird, like, you know when, like, in a movie when, like, a demon talked or something, their voice kind of goes. I I heard it. You heard it? Yeah. Oh, my God, you're haunted. I am. So, in case you guys don't know what we're talking about, I don't know where we're going to put this, if it's going to even go anywhere. But it's a picture of Tinky Winky, basically the the new nude, the vacuum. Its little sucky thing is right on Tinky Winky's dick. Or where his dick his would be. His crotch. His crotch is just, and there's, the new nude's eyes are just kind of like swirling. And Tinky Winky looks like he is either having none of it or he is thoroughly (laughs) enjoying it. I can't tell. Oh, no. I like how this stemmed from crazy dreams. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I have I. <laughs> I still fucking so like okay so I should probably talk about what the dream is. So the dream would be I would be facing my wall and I had this dream consecutively from about the age of maybe 5 to 8. Uh-huh. Where I would hear the sucking sounds come from downstairs and hear it moving upstairs to my room where uh-huh. it would then like basically come into my room and just use its sucky thing to just suck me into it. Huh. But it felt like I was awake every time. And yeah. I had that series of dreams. Some people are listening to this right now and like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What, <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> That's basically the um, the nightmare. The continuous the nightmare, nightmare that I had as a kid. It's kind of stupid, but you know... <laughs> No, I'd be like that. I had, uh, I've had sleep paralysis since, for wow, paralysis once. What was that like? So I, I was like <clears throat> half asleep, half awake, and I was laying on my back. And that's usually when sleep paralysis happens. And like mm-hmm. ever since that day, I, I don't sleep on my back whatsoever because I don't want it to happen again. So yeah. I was laying on my back and i was like looking up at the ceiling and all of a sudden i saw like this like dark shadow like go across like the ceiling oh god and i couldn't move and my eyes started like fluttering as if like i looked like i was literally having a seizure and i just couldn't move and it felt like so long and then i heard like a whisper um somewhere in my room but i i i couldn't tell from where and then, like, after that, I eventually woke up and, like, I could move again. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? That's... And I told my grandma and she, <laughs> so she, she's pretty religious. So she, like, said, like, a little prayer. And then she got white flowers and I don't remember what else, but it was, like, some liquid with white flowers. And I had to go into the shower and like get that bucket and like pour it all over me because that that uh, that apparently like cleanses any like negative energy that's like trying to hurt you or like trying to do whatever to you Mm -hmm. and after that like i i didn't have that experience again and my grandma was like yeah you're cured now you're cured (laughs) by the power of the lord (laughs) the lord the lord oh yeah Eh. It hasn't happened since, so thank you, White Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I'm going to look up False Awakening Loop. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> the way that Rochelle describes it here it sounds kind of terrifying. Yeah. False Awakening Loop. It's like, hot. you think you're awake? Nah, nah, nah. Top article. False Awakening meaning causes when to worry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when to worry. When to worry. Awesome. Uh, let's see. There are two types. Type 1, a type 1 false awakening proceeds in a fairly straightforward way. After waking up, you do the same things you typically would. This type won't feel scary as it happens, though you might feel disoriented or somewhat distressed when you actually wake up. Type 2, with this type, you might wake up with a sense of foreboding or feel convinced something strange or bad is about to happen. This type of false awakening could resemble sleep paralysis, especially if you dream, you wake up and can't move or escape from some type of malicious presence in your room. When you do wake up, though, you'll be able to move normally. When While type 2 false awakenings can feel unnerving, there's no evidence to suggest they actually mean something bad is about to happen. That's terrifying. So what I had was type 2 then. Yeah. Sounds like. That's crazy. I've always made the joke of, oh, it's my sleep paralysis demon, but I've never <laughs> had sleep paralysis <laughs> to the point where I've woken up and I've seen a shape in my room or I've seen a demon sitting on my yeah, chest. Thankfully, I have never seen like an actual figure. I just saw like a shadow go over, like go over me on the ceiling, but never actually saw a figure, like a humanoid figure. I'd cry. At my last apartment, I was basically living out of this really tiny room. It's about the same size as my stream room, almost, with a closet. Mm -hmm. So I was very cramped in there. And I remember one time I started falling asleep at my desk. 
and I remember slowly opening my eyes, looked to, to my right because I saw just this figure of somebody just standing there, and I thought it was one of my roommates, but I looked up, and it was just like in like a flash of a second, it just looked like this like black figure was just standing over me, just looking down. And then I, oh God. I jumped, my knee hit my desk and like popped a screw out. Ooh. Scared the shit out of me. And I had nothing, like my lights were on. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd 100% cry if I saw like a, just any kind of figure of someone just, just vibing in the corner. I'm like, no, thank you. But thankfully, I haven't had any kind of experience like that since then. Good. Um, there was a time, though, when I don't know if I told you about this, but I thought that my house might be haunted or that somebody might be living in my house with me. I like vaguely remember you saying something about that. So a lot of my forks went missing. <laughs> OK. And I don't know why I thought of this but i remember i don't know if you ever saw that video of that man who had somebody like living in his house oh with yeah him. and he like he, came down from like the attic yep. and he would like steal food in the middle of the night and shit yep. oh god that was terrifying and i remember i i first my mind went to that and i was like fuck what if there is somebody because it's i'm not always home so Do you have an attic no, I don't think so. But I have a basement. What? <laughs> that I have a basement that is in on my floor that I ha the only door to the basement is in my actual apartment. Like I have a closet oh. and then right next to it is a door that leads down to the basement. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. So I don't know. Although it's, I always leave that door locked. I mean, I would too. I'd be like, no, that is a no go. There have been times where I've been laying in bed and I'll hear footsteps in my apartment, but I think it's just the cats that are upstairs. Okay. Uh, but it's it was very unnerving to realize that some of my silverware went missing. Don't know why yeah. forks in particular, <laughs> but... <laughs> Needs them forks, fam. Needs them forks to eat the bugs that are downstairs. <laughs> Can you imagine? Dude. <laughs> I come home one night and there's just this pale old man, this hermit that I've never seen before, just in my apartment. Dude, just taking your forks. <laughs> this dude's never seen sunlight for the last 20 years. Like, what the fuck do you do in that situation? <laughs> yeah, do you run? Just walk out. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, this is your apartment now. <laughs> or, like, do you ask him, do you try and strike up a conversation with him? Be like, hey, why haven't you revealed yourself? <laughs> hey, why, uh, how long you been here? <laughs> like, if you need, I can point you in the direction of a hotel or something. <laughs> Just get out of my apartment. I Dude. pay rent here. I, 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 keep, <laughs> I, I keep the lights on around here. What do you do? You just steal my forks, motherfucker. <laughs> Just steal my forks. Fucking asshole. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry for my honk laugh. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just honk. Uh, it's alright. Last episode, there was a lot of honking going on. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> There's so many different tangents on this, on this episode. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Just going. What's got you high? What's got you high? Daryl. Brianna. What's got you high this week? Uh, what's got me high this week is I've been playing a lot of video games lately. Not on stream, but just for myself. Aw. You know, yeah, it's, I saw you tweeted about that. It made me so happy. It's been a while. You know, I've been live streaming, and the mo the majority of the time when I ever play video games, it's on my live streams, which yeah. you guys can follow me on at uh, twitch.tv forward slash youngretro64. I stream, Ooh. I try to stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday now with this new project and whatnot. It's, it's been... It's been great because for the last three years, like I said, mostly been streaming. That's where I get my video game time in. But yeah. lately, 
I've just been doing it in my downtime and video games for the first time in a while have kind of just become for me. Fuck yeah. I've been doing that too. It feels so nice. What have you been playing? I've been playing a lot of uh, Call of Duty, the new Cold War. Yes. I still it's need to get that a so lot we can play of, zombies really together. Do. Yes, dude. It's so much fun. Like, I've, I've been grinding zombies. Like, I finally got around to doing um, the Easter egg last night. I didn't finish it, but I learned some steps from it. Nice. So, decided to finish it. And I haven't really played a Call of Duty game in a long time, but I would be willing to to play some zombies with you. Honestly, this one feels really good. Like, I remember being so disappointed with Modern Warfare. And, um... Like, I, I, I remember being excited about the beta of Modern Warfare. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. I just skipped over that one. I think the last Call of Duty that I ever owned was Black Ops 4. Oh, that's valid. Yeah, I played a lot of Black Ops 4. I got to max prestige, I'm not even gonna lie. I we was played, trying hard. We played a lot of Black Ops 4 together. <laughs> yeah, we played a lot of Prop Hunt. Oh, I miss Prop Hunt. <laughs> so much fun. I want to do another stream where we just play Prop Hunt, because that's a lot of fun. Dude, I miss that, yeah. I assume that this new Call of Duty does not have prop hunt. Um, I don't think so. I think that was only like a... Oh, I know, but this is technically Black Ops 2. So, no, I think it... I think they aren't bringing that back. Unless they bring it back for, like, April Fool's Day or some shit. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. That would be great. That'd be dope. Uh, Activision. Bring back <laughs> prop hunt in Call of Duty. Fuck yeah. It's the only way I'll play your games again. <laughs> Is if you bring back this game mode that you that was ripped off from Gary's mod. <laughs> <laughs> Good game though. Uh, has anything else really been getting me high? Uh, other than weed, I don't think anything else has really been getting me high. <laughs> Nothing really stands out in my mind. Oh, actually, one one small thing. Um, I I'm not gonna say where this was, but are you familiar with the charity Toys for Tots? Yes. I was out and about this week, and once again, won't say where, and there was this little display thing going on where they were advertising Toys for Tots, and there was a person giving a speech, and at the end of their speech, instead of saying Toys for Tots, they accidentally said Toys for Twats. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different charity. And they didn't even... <laughs> And they didn't even they didn't even try and correct themselves. I just Damn, died. I was I trying so can... hard not to laugh because oh I was in a setting where if I laughed and acknowledged the fact that they had messed up that badly, I probably would have I probably would have gotten a couple looks. Oh god. Yeah, I don't think there's any way you can like go back from that. You can't, <laughs> you can't recover, recover from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. Toys for twats. Uh, toys for twats. I'm going to start. Um, never mind. Uh, what's got you high? <laughs> 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 I was going to say, I'm going to start an online sex toy shop and call it Toys for Twats. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I've never heard you like, I've never heard you kind of wheeze laugh before. Oh. Uh. That's funny. Can we name this episode Toys for Twats, or is that gonna Please? like get flagged? <laughs> I mean, our thing is under like explicit content, so uh, that's true. Oh man, my eyes. That's funny. <laughs> Briannis, <clears throat> what's got you high? So Darylis, what's got me high is I got to see my best friend this week. I went to go visit her for her birthday. Um, it was dope because I hadn't seen her in like maybe a few months because she lives like three and a half hours from me um have you seen yeah. her since pa the pax east trip yeah i've, I've seen her once since okay. the pax yeah but now this time was the second okay um but yeah so we s went to go celebrate her birthday at um chili's Ooh. with with her boyfriend and her brother <laughs> <clears throat> so it was us four we were just vibing i had steak fajitas bitch they were incredible Ooh, man. dude oh so good absolutely fantastic um but yeah it was a good week 
uh, we just hung out. We didn't really go out much because, you know, Miss Rona. Yes. Miss so, Rona. Miss Rona. It was a good time. It was a good week. I was happy to see her, spend her birthday with her. It's, it's been a minute. And I literally, I've spent every birthday with her since, like, we were 15. Aw. Yeah. Oh, except one. <laughs> except one. <laughs> except one. <laughs> We can't talk about that today. <laughs> it was it, it's a little yikes. <laughs> I have a really serious question to ask you. Okay. Did you feel God in that chilies? Daryl, I felt so much God and so much Jesus in that chilies <laughs> that I, I had no idea what to do with it. First off, I just want to say it, we're going to be doing our commentary tracks on movies and TV shows soon, hopefully. Yeah. And I'm just telling, putting this out there right now. If anybody tells us or recommends the office, I will kick you in the face. <laughs> we are not going to be doing commentary tracks over the office. I have seen that show way too many times now to the point where I hate it. <laughs> Honestly, that's completely valid. I used to think that Jim and Pam were like the ideal TV couple, but to be quite honest, I find them obnoxious and annoying. I mean, yeah. I I will never understand those people that like think watching The Office is a personality trait. I <laughs> So, the times that I've been on Tinder, I can't tell you how many bios say Dude. looking for the Jim to my Pam. <sighs> I, or just something like they quoted, like the God in the Chili's. Like I don't get. It. Like it's a good show. It was fantastic. Watched it, loved it. Some Seen of, it way too many times. But. Yeah, some of the greatest writing in <clears throat> comedy has been on The Office. Yeah, but, but like let it die. <laughs> let it die, please. <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> I can't. I honestly can't stand the show after Steve Carell left, and I think that's a same. That's a widely so viewed bad. opinion. Or widely Wasn't it shared opinion. Will Ferrell that went Will on Ferrell it? took over for two days and then his character got like killed off or something like that. Oh yeah. And uh like he went to go dunk a basketball in the warehouse and he held onto the oh, rim yeah. for so long and it came down and crashed on his head. But then he came uh -huh. back from the hospital just like And he and he couldn't speak. He couldn't speak. <laughs> I met Creed Bratton once. <gasps> Really? Yeah, he came to do a performance, uh, like a little acoustic thing, and he used to talk about The Office. What a uh, guy! Yeah, and his character's pretty underrated. It was a, he, he. I loved Creed. Like he has some he of the so best lines funny. in that show. I love how we went from talking about. I went to talk about how I hate The Office now, but now, <laughs> now we're now reminiscing we're like, about what a good show. The greatest hits. <laughs> What's her? Uh, Jenna Fisher. Yes. And uh, what's her what's her name? Angela. I think her oh, real name is Angela. Angela. Yeah. Angela Kersey or some shit. Yeah. All they do now is just talk about office stuff all the time. Like I mean, I... they peaked in the office. So, I mean, <laughs> that's true. Let me go to. Um... Wasn't there a little like reunion with I everyone? I don't know. The other day, I feel like someone had like a barbecue or some shit and like all of them were there. Except, like, uh, John Krasinski. That's not Jenna Fisher. I was like, why is there no check mark next to this? That looks nothing like her. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna. Jenna Fisher. Oh, because it's with a C. It's that kind of oh, Fisher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fish curve. <laughs> I guess there. Oh, yeah. I, she does a podcast <clears throat> or something with Angela, oh. Angela Kinsey. Oh, yeah, because they're like best friends in real life. Yeah. Office Ladies is the name of yeah. their podcast. Oh, my God. It would be. <laughs> Their most recent episode, they had um, they had Toby on. Oh my god, Paul Lieberstein. I, one of my favorite moments from from the Office is when Michael tells Jim that he's been sleeping with Pam's mom, and they're sitting in the break room, oh. and then Toby comes in, and like Jim is just so distraught. He's like, he's like, "Hey, Jim," and then <laughs> Jim's like, "Not now, Toby. My God." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Toby got <laughs> shat on. Aren't him and uh, Steve Carell, like, best friends, too. Who? Um, Toby and Steve Carell. Are they? Yeah, I'm Are pretty they? sure they were, they're were they best friends, and that's why uh, he gets shat on. Oh, uh, um, I didn't even know that. I didn't even yeah. know that. 
I had for the longest time this Dunder Mifflin mouse pad. I don't know if you ever saw it. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, I don't know if you ever saw how dirty that thing was. <laughs> I didn't. I Norm has seen how dirty it is. Um, It'd be like that sometimes. My mouse pad now is not the greatest, but... Do you have that yeah. RGB kind of... Uh, yeah, like that long one. Yeah, I have it too. Um, yeah. It's pretty good. I But my Dunder Mifflin mouse pad, I cannot tell... I've had that since 2013. Oh my god. I threw it out in 2019. You know? I cannot tell you how many stains and shit were on that mouse pad. <laughs> But it was gross, and it was time to get rid of it. It definitely be like that sometimes. Just like the office, it is gross, and it is time to get rid of it. It needs, it just needs to lay, to rest, and just have its time for peace. Yep. Sit the fuck we've down. We've seen it. We've loved it. We've seen the memes. Made the memes. Fantastic. Stop making it your life. <laughs> calm, calm with us, office sheeple. There are other things to watch out there. Like I promise, like give Superstore a chance. Yes, it is not. It fantastic. is not 2010 anymore. It is. It is a decade <laughs> later. Watch other things, God, please. Please, and stop watching Friends too. Like unpopular opinion. I'm not a big fan of Friends. I've actually, I've never really given Friends uh, a try. <sighs> I've never seen it all the way through, but my mom loves it. So I've seen like a few episodes and shit with her, but I just, I can't. And people are like, it's the best show in the history of shows. And I'm like, what do you mean, bro? Like, <laughs> Friends and The Office, I think, have like, I think it's just the rewatch value because it's it's so yeah. easy to just, when you're doing stuff, to just throw on The Office yeah, in the like background. Yeah, just like in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people do you think have fucked listening to The Office in the background? Oh, probably a lot. Because they're probably just watching it and chilling, and then they're like, hey. Because I feel like, okay, like, if I was trying to Netflix and chill, and, like, I knew this is what I was going to go for, like, I would put on The Office, because it's something I've seen before, probably something they have seen before, just have it in the background, and then do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> do the thing. Imagine trying to have sex while watching Dinner Party. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And white right when it's getting like really hot and steamy, the uh, their the, the song that um the it took me by the hand <laughs> made me a man. <laughs> oh my God. Just that song that, that just that song that Hunter Dude. wrote just comes on and you make sweet, passionate love over that. My God. Honestly, that episode, Unmatched. Incredible episode. It's my favorite episode. Like, yeah, if I could same. only watch one episode of The Office for the rest of my I'd life, it would be forever. Dinner Party. Yeah. Watching Steve Carell just watch TV, watch <laughs> that, on, the, on the tiny plasma screen TV. Have you ever seen the blooper? <laughs> He just starts laughing hysterically. He's like, it extends. Like, look, and he like pulls it out a bit. <laughs> he pulls it out like an inch. <laughs> Dude. Uh, and when he's like dipping his steak in his wine, and <laughs> what uh what's her name? Oh my god. Uh I feel like it starts with a J. Jan. Jan! There we you know, go. Like, and Jan's looking over at him from across the table, and she's like Stop doing that. He's like, <laughs> you know I, that. you know I have sensitive teeth. How could you? <laughs> She's like, oops. <laughs> so stupid, bro. Uh, wait. Could we? Would you be down to doing a commentary track over the dinner party episode? We could do that. Okay, but we're not doing any other office episodes. No, that's the only one. It's the only one. Yeah, sorry for all the tangents today, guys. <laughs> I promise we're going to piece this together so it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, uh, do you want to get into our artists for the week, what we've been listening to? Yeah. All right. Um, I'll have you go first this week. Okay. So, I've been listening to this album by Boys of Fall. It's called Distance. 
it's like mm, it's like rock it's like pop rock but with like occasional screaming parts Ooh. so it's like it's good um definitely my favorite song from there is called closure this whole album is like kind of like a fuck you album like to someone that has hurt them or mm-hmm. whatever and like we stand fuck you albums like, oh like, yeah fuck people <laughs> uh, there's a lot of great fuck you albums oh, out yeah. there i i could listen to fuck you albums forever this is a really good album and i will post it into the pot the playlist for the podcast and if you guys are looking for new music we've like brianna said we've made the playlist all you got to yeah. do on spotify is and it's only on spotify so mm-hmm. if you guys search in the daydream arcade favorites you guys can find that it's the same the the picture should be from the daydream arcade profile and mm-hmm. it has the description you guys will see it and it has all every single song that we've mentioned and some that we may not have mentioned but it's by the artists that we have recommended yeah. it's up there but yeah that's what i've been listening to this album nice Shit. i'm gonna have to take Good. a listen to it oh yeah what have you been listening to, Daryl? Uh, I've been listening to a band called Death Cab for Cutie. Yo, good band. Um, they've been around for quite some time. They came from the Seattle punk scene, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they came directly from like the 90s punk scene, but they are from Seattle. Uh, no. How many great bands have come out of Seattle? We have Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Nirvana, Foo Fighters. Oh. Sound did I say Soundgarden? Yeah. Alice in Chains. Uh lots of awesome bands have come okay, out of so Seattle. Like bangers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nice. Um so I've been listening to Death Cab for Cutie. They have an album out. Transatlanticism is the name okay, of the album. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. They have uh 10th anniversary edition out. They have <clears throat> a bunch of demos added on to there from songs off of that album and it's really good really Ooh. banger of an album so if you guys want to listen to that i'll be throwing on a couple songs from that album death cap nice. for cutie those are my song picks for this week oh and i've also been listening to a podcast called goose buds um Ooh. it's these three guys uh paul dom and shad and they they talk about the uh the goosebumps books there's a lot of like bits in between where they just they just talk they just talk shit and stuff but it's huh. it's really it's really cool because i grew up on the goosebumps books yeah and it's really interesting to just to relive those books and kind of just hear people talk about them and yeah. they're also really funny together all three of them have really good chemistry um huh. so if you guys like the goosebumps books and you guys like shenanigans check out goosebuds uh they're on spotify it's a podcast i'm pretty sure you can find it everywhere else and speaking about finding podcasts on other platforms, we are now currently on what, like 200 fucking platforms now for <laughs> this podcast. Yes. Yeah, we're on like, I want to say almost 10. All right. So let's see. So we have, in case you guys aren't familiar, we are on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music. We are on SoundCloud. I'm going to make a YouTube channel for the Daydream Arcade because we still want to make other content other than a podcast. And yes. we're also on Pocket Casts, Pod Chaser, Podcast, Castro, uh, Pod Friend, um, Player FM, uh, and... Uh, well, uh, uh, D D's. What was it? Deezer. Deezer. We're on a lot of different platforms, guys. So if you guys aren't, if you guys aren't on one thing, chances are you'll be able to find us on whatever platform you listen to. Hell yeah. And I'm probably we're missing a, a couple. Yeah. There's a lot of pretty much anywhere you can get podcasts. I'm pretty sure we're on right now. So yes. we just want everybody to be able to listen to it. If, whether you listen yeah. to it on a big streaming platform like spotify or if you listen to something that i'm not familiar with like pocket casts Mm because i know that uh shout out to uh trey the tap stream he asked me if we were going to be put out on pocket casts but we are there now so 
Well, guys, thank you for listening to this week of the podcast. We really appreciate you guys listening. We've got a couple things coming up uh, this weekend. Since it's Black Friday, I should announce that this weekend I am going to be doing a charity stream both Saturday and Sunday, um, both at 11 a.m. Eastern. And we are going to be raising money for a nonprofit organization called Stack Up. They're a charity that helps veterans and service members promote positive mental health and suicide prevention through the power of gaming. Um, nice. We are going to be doing it on both days. Hopefully, uh, we're set to um, have a goal of a thousand dollars. I've done charity streams before. We did one charity stream that I helped organize. It was a twenty-four hour event, and we ended up raising two thousand five hundred dollars for direct relief at the beginning of the pandemic, and that was really fun. Haven't done a charity event in a while, so if you guys are interested, definitely come. Come watch. It'll be at twitch.tv forward slash youngretro64. And I'll also be streaming there throughout the week as well. Mostly uh, Wednesday, uh, Monday, mostly Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, sometimes on the weekends. And Brianna also streams on Twitch as well. I do. Twitch.tv forward slash certicate. Hit me up. Sometimes I stream. <laughs> Some. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I gotta. Gotta get back into a schedule. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Until then, I'm just, I'm just, just take, vibing. I'm live when I'm live. Just take it one stream at a time. To be quite Damn honest, right. that's what yeah. that's kind of what I've been doing. I, if I feel like if I put too much pressure on myself to put on a schedule, I just don't do it. Yes, I agree. So, you guys can follow us there, and Yarn. you can also follow the Daydream Arcade on Twitter at the at Daydream Arcade and on Instagram at the Daydream Arcade. Thank you guys very much yep, yep. for listening to this. This has been episode three of the Daydream Arcade podcast. We'll see you guys next week. Email us if you guys have any questions or need advice, and we will come up with a question for next week. Thank you guys who participated, and hopefully see you guys next week. Hell yeah. See you later, alligator. Bye-bye. Bye.